Of Oregon Life. Thanks for right? watching this episode, episode of, of Oregon, Oregon Life. Life. Hello, I'm Frank Caruso, producer of Oregon Life. Miss Byarski, fondly known to her students as Miss B, has been teaching for 55 years. And she ha I have a list here of her amazing accomplishments, and I have hours of video. I spent several days in the classroom with her. Uh, many of her accomplishments, I mean, 30 years of coaching cheerleading, going to camps, uh, winning state championships, uh, they're performing at the, uh, the Pro Bowl, uh, ha you know, helping these kids succeed in every aspect of their lives. Instructor for the uh, uh, FHA, which is Future Homemakers America, it's now the FCCLA, uh, 20 state officers, two state presidents, won many gold medal national awards. I mean, the list is endless, but uh, there's a, a couple things. The one thing early on in her career, she took a job outside of school, which uh, collectively is 37 years working in the restaurant industry. And she did that to help to stay current with the culinary trends and to help her kids get jobs in the industry. I think one of the greatest uh, attributes or things that she's given to the community and these uh, kids helping them succeed and find jobs in the industry as chefs uh, and pursuing their dreams. Really an amazing woman. So enjoy this episode of Oregon Life. I teach my students in my uh, uh, master chef or culinary arts classes we talk about the chef's uniform and the chef's uniform includes not only the apron but the check pants the white shirt and the uh, double-breasted jacket now we always will wear aprons when we are in the lab and instead of wearing the apron full length many times a, a chef will you know not wear it this way they'll turn it down and fold it down like this bring it around tie it in front and then after it's tied in the front tuck it under and we tuck it under for two reasons uh, a neat appearance and then it prevents you from maybe pulling something hot down off of a range top because the ends are tucked under nice and neat. There you go. Now we're all ready to go in the kitchen. Hello, I'm Lynn Bayarski and I am the Family Consumer Sciences teacher here at Oregon High School. How did I get into teaching or why did I go into teaching? Well, when I think back to my senior year in high school, 
that was the furthest thing from my mind, is to go to college and be a teacher. However, I did have a student teacher that had a similar background um, in 4-H and FCCLA, and she said I should do this. So I went to college and majored in what at the time was home economics. Now my mother was a teacher and she had three sisters that were teachers. So I have the history of teaching in my family, but they were elementary school teachers. So when I did go into teaching, mom was very, very proud of me. And you know, she would always talk to her friends about me, what I was doing, where I was teaching, that type of thing. So initially, I never really wanted to be a teacher. I graduated from college in June of 1968 from the University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point. And at the time I graduated, I did not have a job. So I went home and it was the end of June and I got a phone call. And it was the principal from Oregon High School. And he was looking for a teacher. I had no idea where Oregon was. I had heard of the Oregon School for Girls because there was a school for girls here in Oregon at the time. I believe he called me on a Monday or a Tuesday and I came here for an interview on Friday, June 28th. My dad and I came. And I interviewed with the principal. It was the end of one fiscal year and the beginning of another fiscal year on July 1, and we had a new superintendent that was coming in on July 1. So I didn't interview with a superintendent. I didn't interview with a committee. In fact, I'm probably the only teacher in the district that never even applied for this job. He called me and apparently I had given permission to the uh, placement office at UW Stevens Point to release my records if someone had called. So I had the interview with him in June. He showed me the building, he showed me the classroom and um, he was very honest with me. He said that he had others to interview and uh, that he would let me know the following week. And I just requested that he let me know either way whether I got the job or not so that I would be free to pursue other potential offers. Well, he called me the next day, June 29th, and offered me the job. Now, I remember that day very well because it was the day that I was supposed to get married, but that didn't pan out. Um, and I've been here ever since. I've been in the same room for the last 55 years. I can remember the very first day I walked into the classroom and I was addressing the students. My knees were just shaking. And they listened attentively, all my students, but then there was one girl that asked a question uh, kind of in a challenging manner, and I'll never forget her until this day, bless her soul. But one thing that was unique to my subject area, home economics or family and consumer science, that has not really changed is hands-on. You know, 55 years ago, we would go in the kitchen and do food preparation. We are still doing that today. So it's, it's hands-on learning. It's not so much the lecture. I mean, they are expected to know, uh, be knowledgeable about food. I tell my students in order to be successful in the kitchen, whether you are cooking or baking, you need to understand the science principles. You have to have that knowledge. And if you don't have that knowledge, you can cook and cook and cook or bake and bake and bake and you, if you're still doing it the same way uh, but don't know why it's not turning out, it's because you don't have the knowledge. So I try to provide my students with that information. One of the ways in which my style of teaching has changed 
over the years is the use of technology. When I first started teaching, I had a blackboard. As time went on, oh, we had an overhead, so I could write things on so students could see. Time went on and on and on. I had to learn how to use the microwave and teach students how to use the microwave because I didn't grow up with a microwave. That's a whole new way of cooking. And then when computers came along, uh, I had to uh, learn that skill. I was a good typist, so I knew the keyboard and so forth, but to learn the language and the terminology of navigating uh, using a computer and the internet, that type of thing. Probably one of the most challenging years was when we shut down for COVID because that is when we were really faced with having to use technology in a way that we hadn't been asked to use it before. And as a result of that, coming out of COVID, coming out of that shutdown, we continue to use, I continue to use a, a, a given platform for conveying daily assignments, daily lessons. So if a student is gone, it's all posted for them to see, they can stay on top of things. They don't have to worry about being a day or several days behind because of the technology. You know, they say teaching is a thankless job and, well, you know, those thank yous may not come back to you immediately. You may not see this, but I can recall a particular situation. I had cheerleading practice after school and I returned to my classroom about six o'clock after cheerleading practice with this one particular evening and there was a substitute custodian in my classroom and he paused and I know he was thinking well does she remember me and you know maybe he was thinking well should I continue to clean or come back then he said uh, do you remember me and I said no. And he told me his name. And then he said this, which is one of the highest compliments that I think I could have gotten as a teacher. He said, did I use my physics? Did I use my calculus? He said, yes. But what you taught me, I use every day. I also recall a student that I had in 1994. He graduated, um, and I think this was one of the high spots in my teaching career because he worked on a project uh, through FCCLA, um, and it was called Leaders at Work in Food Service. And as a result of the project, he won, and he got a full ride of full four-year renewable scholarship to Johnson & Wales Culinary School. As a result of that, today he is a restaurant owner, manager, and very successful. It's Chef Brent coming to you from the beautiful city of Charleston, South Carolina. I'm so honored and excited to be here today to help celebrate Miss B and her 55th year of teaching anniversary. As a freshman in high school, you introduced me to the world of food and beverage. And for the last 20 plus years, that's exactly what I've been doing. You taught me the fundamentals of cooking. We held a state office position, developed a cookbook, worked a few restaurants along the way. You showed me that with a strong work ethic and by being dependable, we can drive nice cars. <laughs> B, God has given you an amazing gift. You have the ability to see in your students what they might not be able to see in themselves. And you have the ability to pull that out of them. And I'm sure that everyone else who is here today will share a similar story to mine. And for all that I can say is thank you. Continue to do what you do. It's worked for 55 years, so there's no need to change it now. Just know that you have had your hand in developing some amazing individuals from the little town of Oregon and they are sprinkled all around the world. God bless you all and enjoy the celebration. It's well-deserved. Thank you for watching this episode of Oregon Life.
Of Oregon Life. Thanks for right? watching this episode, episode of, of Oregon, Oregon Life. Life.